Hello, thank you for checking out A1 Math. And today we are talking about graphing geometric and arithmetic sequences. Okay, so um, what we want to do today is take the equation given, in this case, 15 plus 3 times n minus 1, and see if it's a ge geometric or arithmetic. Well, with this not having the exponent in it here, and this being our first term, this being our common difference, this being our n, this is going to be an arithmetic sequence. Okay? Now, uh, first thing we're going to do is go ahead and plot out the table, and then use the table to make the graph. Okay? So what I'm going to show you how to do is how to take your graphing calculator and get your values for your table. It's really similar to a linear equation or any equation, any regular function for that matter. What you want to do is type this in without the a sub n or whatever notation you're using here and type in under y equal into your equation right here. So I've got the 15 plus 3 now, instead of n, I used x, and you can find that right to the right of the alpha key, where it says x, t, data, and n. So that's what you want to use for your variable. Type it just like that. The next thing you want to do is hit second, and then over here where it says graph to get to the table. We've got our table right there. There's all our points, everything we need. So what I'm going to do, starting since my table starts with 1 here, I'm going to put in the values for 1 and 2 and all the way down here, all those values straight from my calculator. All right. And that will look like this. So we've got the table to the arithmetic function here. Now, this is the same as a regular XY T chart, where you have your independent values here on your left and your dependent values over here on the right. So whatever you plug in here is what you get here. So this will be your X axis, and this will be your Y axis. It's like, for instance, our first point would be 1, 15. And we got to plot that on our graph. But the thing is, our graph is blank. Okay, now, since my x-axis is real easy here, 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm going to go 1, 2, whoop, let's scratch that, let's start off with 0, and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Okay, that's easy. The harder part is here where you got bigger values, and you want to get the fit on the chart on the graph and you want to have an accurate representation of what you're looking at. Okay, So here there's 10 um, sections here and since it's 42 I want to find something nice and even to round in or divide by 10 so I can get the right spacing on my graph here. So since it goes from 15 to 42 I'm going to go from 0 to 50 that way I can include all my data in there. Okay, so if I make the first uh, point here for my y-axis to be 0 and my last one to be 50. All right, now since there's 10, that means that when I divide this by 5, or I'm sorry, divide it by 10, divide uh, 50 by 10, that's going to make each block here 5. So it would be 5, 10, 15, 20, and so forth and so on. And I like a little bit of spacing when I write that, so I decided to go with 10 here, uh, 20 here, and so on. So what I end up with is this here. All right, now, next, I'm going to go ahead and do just like I said, plot out each one of these points, starting with 1 and 15. So at 1 and 15, I'm going to go over 1 
and up to 15 here. Try to make that seeable. Then at 2, I'm going to 18, about right in here. At 3, I'm going to 21. At 4, 24, right in here. And just keep on going. Okay. All right. 5 is up to here. All right, six will be 30. Seven will be about 33. Eight will be about 36. And nine will be real close to 40. And then last we have 42. Okay, so this is graphing an arithmetic sequence here. Notice you have a straight line because it's a linear function. All right, now let's take a look at a geometric sequence. All right, so with geometric, we're going to have uh, 3 times 2 raised to the n minus 1. Okay, we're going to do the exact same thing and type it right in our calculator like so. Matter of fact, let me type it in this calculator so it's still. So I'm going to go back to y equal, clear out my old one, and type in 3 times 2. Use my carrot to get to the exponent. Put in my variable. I'm going to go ahead and put that in parentheses. Alright. And hit second. Graph so I can get to the table. And there's my values. So I start plotting those out. Starting with 1. So 1 would be 3, 2 would be 6, and then I just keep on going. Okay? And once I plot them all out, I'll end up with this. Now typically on a geometric sequence it can grow pretty quickly. And we've got pretty large numbers here. So since I have a small number like 3, and it goes all the way up to uh, 1,536, again, I want to pick a nice number between 0 and something divisible by 10 so I can break it down each section here. So my x-axis, I'm going to keep the same as I had before with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. But over here, I want to go from 0 to 2,000. And I want to have my uh, each section here, each block, each unit that goes up here to be 200. 2,000 divided by 10 will be 200. So I have 200, 400, 600, 800, and so on. Now I'm going to go ahead and plot out my points. Okay. All right. So these first views will be really, really small because this is 200 here. So this barely will come off the line. Like it's just here and here and here. All right. And then around about 4 you know, maybe up a little bit, maybe a smidgen on 5, okay, because 5 is 48, and that still, still should be close to 200, maybe a fourth of the way, 6, all right, about 
a little more than half the way or half the way there. And you just keep going. But as you keep going, it starts to creep on up there. And what you end up having is this. And you get an exponential function. All right? So to recap here, what we've done is we've graphed a rhythmic and geometric sequence. Okay? Uh, first, we typed it in the calculator to get the values in the table, and then just plot out our points. Okay? So here's a couple of practice problems. And to make it a little bit easier, I went ahead and plotted out the numbers here so you can see them. And once you've done that, you can check your answers here. Matter of fact, let me zoom in here. Here's the first one. the next one. Notice on number four, because of your uh, negative common ratio, that's going to make your values go back and forth across the x-axis. So it's kind of like two uh, exponential functions here. So always be aware of that. And again, I want to thank you for checking out A1 Math. Have a nice day.